I want to build a tape delay. I'm looking for something with not just warmth and warble, something with imperfections, something noisy, something that truly can give character and soul to the guitar or piece of music. I guess I'm looking for texture, and I suppose I'm looking for nostalgia, but I'm also looking for elegance. I'm looking for a way I can use my creativity and build something unique. I love working with off-the-shelf products, things that anybody can get. And I started off with this Walkman, a ubiquitous Walkman from Amazon, something that would never sell out. So I have identified a couple of things. I was able to remove pieces to expose the microphone. And this is important because we're going to cut this microphone out and we're going to put a jack on there so a guitar signal can go in. The next thing we need to do is add the second playhead. The second playhead essentially is going to play back what was recorded by the record head. So we have the erase head, the record head, and then we're going to add a playhead here. This is the easy method. The easy method is simply just modifying the cassette to remove these tabs and placing this playhead here. This whole mechanism will move and push the playhead in at the same time as recording. In the digital age of instant gratification, the tape delay stands as a beacon of warmth and nostalgia. Its subtle warble adding depth and character to every note. There was a time where imperfections were embraced as part of the tool, as part of the machine, and part of the soul. are cool. They're definitely retro, and they're super cheap. The quality of the components isn't that great, so we can be guaranteed a low-fi sound. And it's true, much of the content is quite noisy. This is due to a number of reasons, <laughs> including how I built it. But, in general, these tape decks weren't high fidelity, and were not really capturing a very high fidelity sound. So the result is something quite dirty and gnarly, which adds to the charm. But there can be no denying that cassettes are cool. Okay, so here we are in what I would call sort of phase one, which is a proof of concept. And the proof of concept is simply to see if we can use these Walkman to build a tape-based guitar echo. Now, there are a ton of YouTube videos where people have already made echo pedals using these old Walkmans. But a lot of the times they don't explain their work and there are some complexities to the build complexities with either design circuitry or there's intense modification to the devices and the cassette tape itself. So what I wanted to try to do was try to make an off-the-shelf version where a guitarist with absolutely no knowledge of soldering or circuitry can just connect things with cables. And that's where I'm at here. The guitar goes in here. This is a standard quarter-inch jack and I can mix it here. This is tape head two which is this tape head right here. 
So now I can have individual control over my input signal and the playhead, which is playing back the recorded signal. So then the output goes into this mixer, and this is a headphone splitter. So I have my input from this mixer here, and then I have this cable labeled to the amp right there. So it's just simply going into the amp. And then this one is going out to the record head, which is this right here. So here is the modified cassette. Because the second playhead is here, I had to clip some of the plastic bits from here so that this playhead can fit inside here. So right there's the modified cassette and I put a little piece of foam there. And all I did was use these clippers. Snip, 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 snip. That was the modification of this tape. You don't have to make a tape loop. Just let the tape run and then flip it. It clearly works. But I want to simplify this even more. Now you can get this on Amazon, fully built for around $29, or you can get the kit, which saves you like five bucks or something. And we'll just go ahead and quickly build this. First thing that I have to do is remove these mechanisms from the actual plastic. The one thing that's really cool is that it does have this mechanical switch, right? So when you engage the playhead, it closes this circuit here and these little guys. This carriage pushes these two pieces of metal together and it completes the circuit and provides power to everything. And so it's just two wires and so I just wired up these to a switch. So this is the circuit board and I've labeled pretty much everything that's important. So there's the motor, it's just two wires. There's the switch for the power, two wires, two solder points. There's the head. And then here's the mic, which I'm using as the input. And I know that's probably terrible, but that's all I have here. And obviously you have the headphone out, but there's also a speaker out here if you wanted to take the speaker out. Obviously you can run this off batteries, which is really cool because it will provide whisper quiet power. But right now I'm just using the USB. So there is a modification to the cassette that's required. So what we need to do is expose the sides. And so it's not really hard to do. All these cassettes that are blank, you know, they're little screws. And so you just basically unscrew it. So I don't think it's necessary to go out of your way to use a Dremel tool or anything, but I just use these. And I'll show you how I do it, uh, just to give you some quick examples. So what I learned is you never want to clip perpendicular like this, because it'll crack. You want to clip sideways at an angle, like that. And that removed a big chip. And you're just basically removing chips at a time at as much of an angle or as parallel as you can to where you're clipping. You don't want to go like this, because then this will put a straight crack and it'll crack all the way around. You do this side and then on the opposite shell, you do the same thing so that when you put it back together, it exposes the entire side. And I go all the way to the edge, right? So this tape has to be able to come out like that. So the tape comes out of the side. It goes around the first spool into the race head around the second spool 
and then around the actual heads and then I tension it up make sure they're aligned into there and there you go and this mechanism also can go up or down within this acrylic so I did um, laser out some cavities so you can adjust the height of this and then obviously I have the mixer circuits so my prototype one was active mixers and that worked really well these are passive and they do not work as well because all they're doing is summing up all these voltages and you're getting sort of a weaker signal. So there's a couple points here where you can wire up your speed control and one is the factory pot for adjusting the speed of the motor, which is right here. And this is just a trim pot. So you can control the speed slower, faster to a small degree. And you might just want to get away with that. That might be all you need adjust your delay time you might want to replace this pot that's one option getting back to here and when you push record it's doing something in the back you'll notice back here there's this metal shelf and that moves up and down every time you put the playhead in so when you push in the record button that metal shelf is pushing this in and essentially making it record. So all I did was, well, you can do two things. The spring is easily removed. And then I push, put a piece of wood between here and the antenna to keep it pushed in. And I just taped it because you could hot glue gun it too. So these patch points make this unit pretty unique in that you can patch in between pretty much everything guitar in goes back here that's a quarter inch jack and it's patched in here so basically you can take a patch cable and that is your guitar right there so you can put anything in between your guitar and the mixer which is right there anything can go between the guitar before it hits the delay which is really cool the same thing goes for the playhead so the playhead basically gets connected to here, right there, and now this is your playhead. So now you can connect anything in between the playhead. Now you have your outputs. So you have two unique signals, which are these two. They're the exact same signal, which is whatever the sum is of the guitar and the playhead, however you mix them, right? And now these can go out and you can patch anything in between these. So for example, this is going straight to the amp. So now if you think about it, if this is the sum, the dry signal of your guitar in and the playhead, whatever it's reading off the tape, you can actually connect whatever you want before it hits the amp. So this is pretty unique if you have a modular system with a lot of modular gear, or even if you wanted to go into different pedals or whatever you wanted. The only disadvantage was I chose to use passive mixers because I because of power issues. And that was a bad, bad idea. So I would recommend not using passive mixers. They're just not loud enough. You need to really push the gain. And the way the passive mixers works by summing everything just does not work really well at this unit. Here's what it looks like inside. All right, this is a huge mess, but uh, this is the way it looks. So essentially I have what I'm calling Lean Walkman 1, which is the record Walkman and Walkman 2, which is the play. So this play Walkman is the one that's connected to the actual motor that's driving the cassette deck. And then I have a USB hub here. Now this is my second issue that I'm having, is this is not a grounded USB hub. So it's powered, but it's powered with only the two prong. So I have it going out over here and then plugging it in, it's powering both my Walkmans. And I think this is a pretty terrible idea a lot of line noise so what i want to try to do is two things in v3 get a three prong grounded usb hub or run both these off batteries which would be the cleanest quietest method of powering these circuit boards the whole idea of all the cables is that i needed to be able to open this panel to be able to work in here and so that's it's a huge big fat mess so this is the underside of the top panel and you can see I have some holes here for the record and playhead. And they're kind of taped down here so I don't yank on the cables. You have the two mixers 
I've lasered out the cavities here so that the Walkman device can actually seat in here and it doesn't interfere with that flywheel and the motor. And then I have the patch bay here. One, two, three, four. These are one eighth inch cables. Here's the pot that's unwired yet because we haven't decided where that's going to go. And then here's the switch that is wired to both Walkmans that turns them on. This would be your out jack that goes into the amp, and this is your in jack where the guitar cable comes. And of course the in jack is wired straight to that patch bay right there.